my name is Brianna and today I'm here to review the new book Verona Comics by Jennifer Dugan which just came out today actually. This is the like follow-up, they're not related but it's kind of in a similar thread I would say based on how the covers look, to Hot Dog Girl which I didn't read but my friend Julia does and she loves it so I was really excited to read this book. It has a modern take on Romeo and Juliet which I feel like Romeo and Juliet in a sense can be very overdone but I also feel like we haven't kind of had a more modern take on it in a while so it felt more original to me you know. For the Romeo and Juliet aspects of this book aside from being called literally Verona comics which is where Romeo and Juliet live the two characters who start a relationship in this book are from opposite company comics I guess you could say. So we have Jubilee whose stepmom is a huge indie comic author and illustrator. She's really big on kind of like the indie scene and everything with that. And then on the opposite end, we have Ridley, whose dad runs like the biggest kind of corporate comic company and is trying to put out of business or like incorporate and take over all these independent stores and independent comic lines like the one that Jubilee's stepmom has. She has her own store, she has her own comic line, she really is trying to do it on her own and be independent and not so corporate. And obviously Ridley's dad they don't like each other because I think there was an incident they said in the beginning where like they asked if they would ever work together and the dad was like we would love to work together and the stepmom like laughed in his face and was like not a chance sucker. So like Romeo and Juliet these characters meet under masked somewhat circumstances and don't realize originally who they are at first and there's this whole kind of secrecy you know thing going on but what really interested me in this book is that Jubilee she has her life really together. She's got two loving parents. She is a a great celloist and has this big audition coming up to try and get a scholarship and get accepted into this really great program. Her friends are awesome. She's really on top of school work. Like she's just living kind of her best life. Ridley on the other hand is a just mess. He doesn't have anything together and I say that with so much love because I love Ridley so much. He has so much anxiety. He's very depressed. He has a lot of panic attacks and just worry about everything. He stresses about it. He is not close with either of his parents. He doesn't have a lot of friends and he just hasn't really had a good like life which is sad even though you know he's the one with the money. He's the one that on the surface should be the one that has it all. And what I really liked about this book was that for once, and I'm sure there are other books I just haven't read them and it's definitely not something that's as common, for once it was the guy that was kind of dealing with the mental illness more so and with the anxiety and all that and the girl was the one that kind of had it together and was the one that was helping him through with it. So I think that's important because I think one, like I said, I don't think it's something you see all the time and I think it's important because even as much as we've gotten open about talking about mental illness in society, I think it's still very much for guys something that is kind of hard to talk about because they're expected to not get anxious, not get nervous, just be like fine with everything thing and you know in a way like it's almost more acceptable when you think of like anxious girls like teenage girls or depressed postpartum mothers like I just feel like that's kind of how our society has wrapped up mental illness in a way of being like okay we'll accept it but only in like ways that we expect it to be so I think it was really important to see a male perspective on anxiety and how that also affects him and it was written incredibly incredibly well. The book is split up between Jubilee's point of view and Ridley's point of view and it goes back and forth and you kind of get to see how different situations affect each of them differently like how meeting him was kind of just like this exciting thing for Jubilee. Meeting Jubilee as much as he wanted to was very nerve-wracking and panic inducing for Ridley and I really like too it starts with Jubilee's point of view so when you meet Ridley he kind of seems like this aloof mysterious guy who has it all together and then it immediately switches to Ridley's point of view in the second chapter and you realize that he's having like a full-on panic attack just from talking to her and I think it was really really well written like the anxiety and the panic attacks and all that you can feel them and you can relate to it if it's something that you have struggled with how you just kind of second guess everything you're saying and you say something and if someone doesn't react like in a way you're expecting you just automatically feel like a loser and a failure and I feel like they did a really really good job of that. This book though was I will say way more heavy than I thought it was going to be and I don't want to spoil anything but I do think that you need to understand going into this book for your own sake of being like if it puts you in a bad headspace that this book is for the most part till the end you're watching 
Ridley unravel. Like it's not watching someone on the upswing, it's someone who very much has those ups and downs and who doesn't understand really that he needs professional help. And again, I don't want to spoil anything, I just think that's an important thing because the way that it's summarized on Goodreads and stuff like that, it makes it seem like this very kind of cutesy love story meet cute about like two kids just from like opposite sides of completely different businesses and that's their main thing. It's not though. It's really Ridley's anxieties and how Jubilee starts to take the responsibility of being there for him and kind of being his person and how that ultimately starts to affect you and how you, you like relationships people they can't make you better all alone like you have to make the decision to make yourself better and recognize and understand that you need help so I think that that's just something important that I wanted to point out because again I wasn't expecting it and I feel like again like a lot of Ridley's chapters were very hard to read with his anxiety and his panic attacks and stuff especially if that's something you struggled with so just knowing that like if that's gonna not be good for you I think that then you need to understand and know yourself because it does get very intense it gets very heavy and it gets very I think it's important but it's just one of those things that it's it's not right for everyone at this time. Like you have to know yourself, you know? It reminded me a lot of Fangirl, like elements of that. And then especially towards the end, it also reminded me of Spectacular Now, if you've ever read that book, uh, which are two books I did not enjoy that much, but put together, like I think these had the elements that I did enjoy or they did the elements better in this book. So I ended up enjoying it a lot more than I thought I would considering like they, it reminded me of those two books, you know? Again, it's really some heavy stuff, but it's important stuff. It deals with a past reference to suicide. It deals with anxiety, suicidal uh, ideation. It deals with parental abuse and stuff like that. And just, it's these things that they're heavy, but they're important. And it is dealt with in a really respectful way. And it's also done in a realistic way. Like, I feel like in a perfect world, you would want everything to be perfectly fine you just need like this one thing to happen this one moment where like people realize how they've been acting and treating you and then it all changes and you never really get that but that's kind of how life is more you know so I think that's why as much as I normally don't like books that kind of don't have that like moment and that happy ending I think I was okay with this one more because it felt more true to what was happening like you're reading this and as much as you love them you're like this can't go on forever like it's just not feasible it's not fair to either of them because neither of them are getting what they actually need out of this relationship like the cons are starting to outweigh the pros even if you love each other like you have to realize is this good for us the one quick thing I did want to mention that is a spoiler because I think it's very important so if you haven't read the book yet which I mean it just came out today so kudos to you if you did read it um but I think it's important for people that are reading it looking back now so yeah spoiler coming I'll, I'll raise my hand and I'll put it down when the spoiler's done but one thing I really did like was throughout the whole book a big thing that Ridley is dealing with is the neglect and abuse from his dad particularly but neglect definitely from his mom and a thing I really liked with this is that there was always moments where you saw Ridley being like okay I think this is the moment where he's gonna realize that he's treating me awful and he's gonna stop and apologize. There was never a moment like that in the book and what ends up actually happening is that Ridley with along with his therapist and his and he even says it himself like he cuts them out of his life. He's like they're not good for me like whatever issues I have they make them worse. So it's like that's like partially like they're my issues but it's also like look at them and what they've done to me. And I think realizing, you know, that like, even though it's your parents, even though it's your family, you shouldn't have to keep them in your life if they aren't healthy for you and if they're not understanding and respecting your boundaries. And I think that was a really important thing because I think other books and other kind of iterations of this might make it so like the parents realize what they're doing is wrong and apologize, but that's just not real life. And you shouldn't have that pressure and that expectation that you need to please your parents and be around your parents just because they're your parents. Like there's even a moment where Ridley and Jubilee towards the end are trying to figure out what to do and Jubilee's like we can go to my parents and Ridley's like no like we can't trust them you trust them too much like no and Jubilee like gets sad and is like you're supposed to be able to trust your parents even if they're mad at you even if you're mad at them like they're supposed to have your back no matter what so I really like that they didn't sugarcoat that and make it so it was you know all of a sudden fine and like they realized what they were doing was wrong because like their par his parents had their own issues so I like that that like they were like we're not gonna have him reconcile with his parents because his parents are unhealthy for him. so 
end of spoilers, the hand is going down. But yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this book. I think it was a very realistic and very, again, respectful take on anxiety, on parental figures and how they're not always there for you and you shouldn't be expected to just put up with that and also like with Jubilee how you can't put especially as like a 17 year old girl you can't be someone's entire support system like you cannot be the one to always talk them down to talk through their anxieties because that's just not fair to you and it's also like you are disrupting your life completely like it, and it's not fair to them either because it's like what if you're not there what if they go so far and all the techniques you've had don't work like they need actual support and medicine and help if you have read this book please feel free to leave your thoughts about it down in the comments i gave it four out of five stars and i'm so excited to see what jennifer dugan writes next because i really really like this book thank you guys all so much for watching be sure to check out the book like i said it just came out today if you're looking for it and i will see you guys next time bye